Welcome to Coplay guys, I'm Matt, and today I'm going to show you how we get the professional sounding audio quality that we try to maintain for all the videos that we post to our channel. Now what I'm going to show you is just the current way that I capture and edit our audio. If I made a video like this six months ago, it'd be way different than this one's going to be. Also I should mention that this is definitely not the best way to do it, it's just the way that I edit and even my process changes quite a bit over time. Uh, there's always a better way to do stuff like this, and when I figure out a better way, I'll likely make another video like this one. Also, if you guys want a more detailed video about how individual effects change the clips that I'm going to show in this video, I'll be happy to make other videos highlighting those and how they work. And if this video turns out to be helpful or exactly what you were looking for, please give it a like, a share, a subscribe, or something like that. I don't know. I feel like every YouTube video these days contains that request, so I figured, why not this one? So to actually record our audio, all we use is Audacity, which is a free, open source recording and editing software. Uh, you've probably heard of it if you're looking into free audio recorders, and for us this is definitely our first pick, and for being free it's everything that I could ask for. Uh, I'll include the link to their site in the description if you want to try it out for yourselves, which I highly recommend. Now I'll show you how I actually edit our raw footage. Keep in mind though that a lot of the resulting audio quality is mostly dependent on the microphone that you use. If you use a cheap microphone, then your sound might not be quite to the level that you're looking for, even after enhancing it. We use two Audio-Technica AT2020 microphones hooked up to a Focusrite Scarlett 2i4 audio interface. So we've kind of dropped a decent amount of money on our equipment, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. And I'll leave a link for those in the description as well. So here's a quick little sample recording that I did for the sake of this video. Hey guys, this is just a quick sample for the Audacity recording. And this is also an example! Holy crap, that was loud. You'll see that the audio clip is rather uneven, and there are some low spots or smaller waveforms, and there are also some louder portions too where maybe we're yelling or something. Uh, when we're done editing this, everything will be a little more uniform. The quiet stretch of the audio in the beginning is intentional as I use that as the noise removal sample. Typically I like to have about 10 seconds or so of silence where we kind of just stare at the computer awkwardly and try not to make any noise. So the first step that I do is the noise reduction. Uh, this is just to get rid of any ambient noise that may be going on in the background, whether it be a fan or the light hum of a computer. Um, adjusting the gain and input volume of your microphone will definitely have an impact on the amount of ambient noise, uh, but this tool is nice if that noise is unavoidable. So what we'll do is highlight the quiet portion of our recording and go up to the effect drop down menu and select noise reduction. Click on this Get Noise Profile button. Uh, the window will close, but don't worry, it took the sample of the noise that you want to remove. Uh, to actually remove the noise from the recording, though, we'll want to highlight the entire clip by double-clicking it and going back up to Effect, back down to Noise Reduction, and now instead of clicking on the Get Noise Profile button again, uh, we'll just click OK. But before you do that, uh, make sure that the noise reduction, sensitivity, and frequency smoothing band values are where you want them. These are just the values that work best for me, and that was really through trial and error that I came up with this minus 25 decibel mark. I think that the sensitivity and frequency smoothing values are at their default values, so I don't think that you'll need to adjust those at all. Uh, just make sure that the reduce button down here is selected and not the noise residue one. So like I said, we'll just click OK. Now that we have the noise reduced, it's time to normalize the clip where we'll essentially bring the average waveform levels up. That'll help raise the quieter portions of the audio and average everything so that the next few effects we do are applied a little bit more evenly. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go up to Normalize in the Effect menu. Make sure that the Remove DC Offset and Normalize Maximum Amplitude boxes are checked and the Normalize Stereo Channels Independently box remains unchecked. I believe that the default value of the middle box is minus one decibels, which is where I like to have it anyway, so we will click OK. For the next step, we're going to use the compressor effect. This effect might look especially confusing, so I guess to summarize it, I think of it as nuking the highs of the audio or squashing down the higher waveforms to be a little closer to the low waveforms. For the sake of sparing you guys the complicated details of what everything this effect does, uh, we'll just use the values that I find work best for our recordings. 
uh, we'll set the threshold here to minus 18 decibels, the noise floor at minus 40 decibels, uh, the ratio at 2 to 1, attack time to 0.5 seconds, and the release time at 1 second. We'll also leave the two checkboxes at the bottom unchecked, and then we'll press OK. If you guys want me to go into detail about how every one of these effects impacts the audio, like I said earlier, I would be happy to do a more detailed video on that, so just let me know in the comments or on our Twitter what you would like me to cover. Now we're going to enhance the voices a little bit with the equalization effect. This window might look a little intimidating also, so I'll just make it easy on you. All we're doing here is boosting the bass and treble of the clip. This is a custom preset that I made, just so I don't have to separately apply a bass boost and then a treble boost. And you may want to do more or less bass or treble in your recordings, uh, but this is just what I use. To make this preset, what I do is go to the treble boost preset and drop that value down to 6 decibels from the defaulted 9 decibel by clicking here and then dragging it down. Uh, then you want to click at about the 500 hertz point on the x-axis and move it just a little bit to add a point on that line, uh, but put that point back on the 0 decibel mark. Then we will go to the 100 hertz point and raise that up to six decibels. This will be our bass boost. Uh, and again, the six decibel levels are just the way that I like to have it, so feel free to adjust the way that you want it. But just be aware that if you boost these too much, your clip might sound a little unnatural, so adjust at your discretion. When you get your preset to the way you want it, click Save slash Manage Curves, uh, click Rename, and then name it what you want, and then click OK then you can click OK on the equalization window. After that renders, we'll want to normalize the clip because we had smushed it or compressed it to add the equalization effect. So we'll go to Effect, Normalize, and everything should be the same way that it was last time we used this, so we'll just click OK. At this point, we want to try and get those highs and lows as close together as we can, and a good way to get that average better is to get rid of the loud waveform outliers. Uh, so what we'll do for this is go to the limiter effect. We'll leave the input gains for the mono slash left and right channel at zero decibels, and we'll put the limiter value at minus three decibels, and have the hold set to 10 milliseconds. Make sure that the apply makeup gains option is set to no, and then press OK. Now that we essentially gave our clip a little trim off the top, we'll average it again with the normalizer. Uh, like last time, it should be the same way as we left it, so we'll just go to normalizer and then press OK. Normally at this point we would be done, but only by personal preference I've found it effective to compress the audio again and then run the normalizer one more time. I think the simplest way to explain why I do this is I think of it as fluffing a pillow where you kind of compress everything down again and then pull everything back to a nice even level. Uh, I just do that in order to try to get the lows and highs closer to the same level like I said. Hey guys, this is just a quick sample for the Audacity recording. And this is also an example! Holy crap, that was loud. Uh, there is a way to do all of those steps in essentially one macro step, but I think I will save that for another video tutorial if you guys are interested in that, uh, because it's kind of a pain to run through all those steps for every single recording that you do. I do also adjust the audio a little bit in Final Cut Pro, which is the video editor that I use uh, to adjust things a little more to balance with the video clips audio. But that's just about it for the Audacity side of things. I'm really hoping this was a helpful video and was exactly what you were looking for. If you guys are interested in more tutorials that kind of show how I do other things for the channel, or if you want me to go into more detail about certain parts of this video, please let me know in the comments section or on our Twitter, which is at CoplayOfficial, and I would be happy to make some more videos like this one. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I also encourage you to check out the other videos that we have posted to this channel because I think you might find them entertaining enough to subscribe to us. Who knows? Either way, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time here on Coplay. Bye bye!